An arson investigation underway after a fire was set outside a National City Church this morning. Why police say good timing helped stop the fire from doing serious damage. The FDA is on the verge of approving a COVID vaccine booster shot. We are hearing from one person participating in the trials and who would be eligible first? And hundreds of millions in funding going toward infrastructure in San Diego. How much of that will go to repairing some of the city's battered roadways? ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. You see the smoke covering parts of this National City Church early this morning as firefighters work to keep those flames from spreading. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Virginia Cha. And I'm Jim Patton. We are joined live by ABC 10 News reporter Marie Cornell, who has been following this story all morning. And Marie, you have learned new details about who police say may be responsible for this. Yeah, Jim, police tell me the person seen on the surveillance video setting fire uh, to this church, which you can see is already boarded up, is someone the church community is familiar with, and now they're looking for him. Once daylight hit, a team of investigators walked around the Church of Christ Iglesia Ni Cristo in National City, looking for damage and evidence that can help them piece together how and why police believe this church was set on fire. They are relying heavily on surveillance video that police say shows a suspect pouring a flammable liquid onto the doors and throwing a lit cigarette onto the spot. After that failed to ignite it, police say the person walked over and lit it manually before taking off in a car. Police tell ABC 10 News the suspect is a former member of the church, adding the church has had run-ins with this person before. It was just after 3.30 Thursday morning when police officers patrolling the area noticed the flames. They pulled over to call for help, and while waiting for crews to arrive, they tried to put out the fire with an extinguisher. Actions investigators believe kept the fire from spreading. Their quick action of, of, of calling it in and getting uh, emergency services rolling, along with the, that initial extinguishment, for sure prevented it from migrating from where it is today into the in interior portion of the church. Though the physical damage was primarily kept to the entrance of the church, morning services had to be relocated to another location because of the fire. Police say the person in the video is facing a felony arson charge. I did speak with the members of this church community, but they did not want to make any statements. Again, police are still looking for the person responsible. Live from National City, Marie Cornell, ABC 10 News. Marie, thank you very much. Well, this morning we are waiting on the latest milestone announcement from the FDA, which is weighing whether to give the green light to booster shots in the U.S. Not for everyone, though. As ABC's Rena Roy tells us, this dose would be targeted at a select group of Americans. Immunocompromised Americans could be one step closer to extra protection from COVID-19. ABC News confirming that today the FDA will likely give emergency use authorization for a booster shot for them. The CDC confirms more than a million people have already reported getting a third shot, even without FDA authorization. Flight attendant Eric Astakan is participating in UC Davis's booster trial. You need to protect yourself, and right now the vaccination is the key uh, aspect of our efforts to stem the pandemic. Some like 38 year old Ian Woods, who has been in the hospital since last week, says he was waiting to get the vaccine and is now urging others to just get it done. I mean, I wish I had gotten it. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have wound up in the hospital like this. It is so important to get those 93 million people who are eligible to be vaccinated who are not vaccinated we have a solution to this problem. Hospitalizations the highest in six months. More than 17,000 ICU beds occupied coast to coast. With a low vaccination rate, Tennessee is seeing available ICU beds disappear, but still... No more masks. Some anti-mask protesters demonstrating outside a board meeting in Williamson County heckled a healthcare professional wearing a mask to his car. We know, we know. The school board later passing a school mask mandate despite the threats. In Florida, the federal government deployed 200 ventilators earlier this week, and doctors there say patients are younger, getting sicker at a more rapid rate, and staying on ventilators longer. 
As for those booster shots, a CDC advisory panel is expected to meet on Friday to discuss them. From there, the CDC director will have to give the green light. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Now let's take a quick look at the situation in San Diego. Vaccinations gradually increasing across the county. Nearly 73% of eligible San Diegans are fully vaccinated. A little more than 1,100 new cases reported yesterday. The positivity rate listed there too. In the last week, on average, 9% of tests in San Diego have come back positive. And just in, San Francisco will require proof of full COVID vaccination for indoor activities such as restaurants, bars, and gyms. City of Los Angeles is on the verge of doing the same thing. Just yesterday, the Los Angeles City Council voted to direct the city attorney to draft the ordinance and how to enforce it. Los Angeles City Council members say this is a means to protect their citizens and keep the economy going. Right now, there is no timetable for when this vaccination ordinance will be officially approved and implemented in Los Angeles. Well, nearly $300 million is being invested to improve the city's infrastructure. This is an effort by the mayor to upgrade our roads, stormwater systems, and much more. ABC 10 News reporter Nate Holmes joins us live from Gold Coast Drive in Mira Mesa. Nate, we're told this is one of the worst roads in our city. Well, Jim, just this morning, Mayor Todd Gloria announced that $293 million will be used to go towards our infrastructure, and $11 million of that has been set aside for Gold Coast Drive and Parkdale Avenue. Stepping out of the way, you can actually see just the much-needed work that needs to be done here on this street. Now, the city says the repairs are long overdue for this road and many others. This is not easy stuff. In terms of how do we get our entire system to where we want it to be, that is a continuous process. The second you improve one street, you got to go back to the last street you did and re repair it there, right? What San Diegans are observing is the failure to maintain our existing infrastructure well, right? We have done the bare minimum of maintenance or no maintenance at all. That's a part of why this road is so expensive to fix. We have not properly maintained it over its 40 year lifespan. And as a consequence, it is an enormous price tag to fix it. Mayor Todd Gloria signed legislation this morning for the nearly $300 million to be used for upgrades around the city. Here's a partial breakdown. $30.4 million will be used to improve drainage, 11, uh, excuse me, 15.14 sidewalks and streetlights, $41.3 million for new tires and trucks, and $28 0.4 million will be used for road repair. Now for Gold Coast Drive and Parkdale Avenue, we're told the repairs are very extensive, which is why 11 million has been set aside specifically for those repairs. Now the streets will need to be reconstructed, but there is hope that there will be it will be completed by the spring. Mayor Gloria says the legislation signed today is just one funding source to make the needed upgrades. The city still has its general fund, state and federal dollars, but unfortunately, the mayor says even with all those funding sources, there is just not enough to fix every crumbling street, he says. But he says that the city is actively working on it. As of right now, there is no price tag as to how much it will cost to upgrade every street in need of repairs. But the mayor says that he believes the infrastructure bill that recently passed in the Senate in Washington, D.C. will also ultimately help with funding here in San Diego. That bill now sits in the House. Live in Mayor Mesa, Nate Holmes, ABC 10 News. Thank you. Unity. Happening today, San Diego Unified is holding a pair of in-person forums to get input on their search for the district's next superintendent. That position has been vacant since Cindy Martin left to take on the role of U.S. Deputy Secretary of Education. A public meeting being held at Lincoln High School right now. Another meeting will be held tonight in the auditorium at Logan Memorial in Logan Heights at 6. A lot of people are weighing in on the search. We do have a crew at the meeting going on now, and we'll have details on that on later editions of ABC 10 News. Overnight, drivers stopping to help another driver after watching her lose control of her SUV on the side of a freeway. Happened just before 4 this morning. Witnesses telling our photojournalist in the 10 News Breaking News Tracker that they saw an SUV swerve abruptly on the 54 near the 805 on-ramp in National City. SUV then spun around, flipped, rolling onto its side to see here. Well, they helped that driver out. She had minor injuries but was taken to a hospital. CHP is investigating the crash.
Well, today, a limited reopening of the Coronado Aquatic Center, which has been hit by the effects of a chlorine shortage. The shortage forced the center to close late last month as the city worked to track down more chlorine. It is back open right now this morning, but only until 1 this afternoon. They say that is when the heat starts to pick up and it burns off the chlorine, so they need to ration things out. They will have that limited schedule through tomorrow. Then they'll close this weekend to evaluate their supply.